Kia ora. welcome to Bust As. Today I'm balancing batteries. No, seriously, today I'm balancing these lithium ion phosphate batteries. So I'm going to top balance these batteries now. Um, what that means is I'm going to make sure that they're all at exactly the same voltage when they're fully charged. There are really there are two main there are two main ways of doing it. So you can top balance or you can bottom balance. Now, if I was building an electric car where I'm expecting to go flat out till the batteries are flat, then I might be inclined to bottom balance them so that I'm not putting the batteries at risk um, you know when they're under load when I'm just about run out of uh, energy whereas um, in, an, in, a, in an RV situation where um, you know if all goes to plan you're, you're continuously keeping them in the top end and they never really get a chance to get flat then there's no need for them to be perfectly balanced at that bottom end and in fact it's more important that they're perfectly balanced when they're fully charged because the idea being that you'll get your batteries back up to pretty much fully charged every day. So I'm top balancing them. Now um, the process I'm going to use for that is to um, bring them up to 3.6 volts which I think is probably high enough. You could, you could technically go higher than that but I think that's probably high enough. Um, I'll consider that fully charged, they'll all be hooked together so, so every single cell will be charged up to 3.6 volts. Now there's a number of ways you can do that, you could charge each cell individually to 3.6 volts. Now that strikes me as something that would take um, an oddly long time and you know by the time you've got the last one charged to 3.6 volts I wonder what the first one would be like. And that's fully charged and they probably don't want to sit there fully charged anyway so I'm going to hook them all together and charge them all up at once now that will also take quite a long time um, and especially so because of the logic I'm going to take now what I'll do is I'll is I will charge them all to 3.4 volts now 3.4 volts is as safe as hell really I mean it's you know it's pretty pretty heavily charged but it's certainly not full um, it's, it's a safe comfortable area so what that means and, and that'll take a long time I, I don't know how long I've tried to work it out but it'll take a long time maybe a few days and and at that voltage I can pretty much just let it go and it'll on a um, with the, the, the with, with my power supply set to 3.4 volts it will slowly taper off on the amps. Now um, at, a, at a high voltage you wouldn't want to spend too long waiting for it to taper off. As soon as you hit that voltage you just want to shut it down. So, um, but at 3.4 it, it, it should be fine. So I can just leave it running, keep a bit of an eye on it every, you know, like half a day, something like that, until um, it hits that 3.4 volts and I'll consider that stage done then in the second stage I will take it to 3.5 volts now that should happen pretty quick um, maybe over just a few hours and um, that will require a bit of monitoring so I really need to keep on top of it when I'm taking it to that stage and, and then the final stage will be between 3.5 and up to 3.6 volts now that should happen pretty quickly um, you know in our minutes uh, so then as soon as I hit 3.6 volts I'm gonna stop and um, then just to make sure that the batteries are in fact fully charged I'll just leave them sitting there for maybe half an hour an hour or so and uh, at that point um, assuming that they're still sitting there quite happily at above 3.5 volts I'll, I will declare that they are top balanced and then I will completely disassemble my battery pack and reassemble it as a 24 volt setup because it's currently a 3.2 volt setup and um, then I'm done 
And what I will do is I will start applying a load to that immediately so that I can um, pull the voltage down and, and just get some of the charge out of it because I don't want it sitting there at fully charged, 100% charged. It's not a load test as such, I just want to get some load on it, get the voltage down a bit, um, give it a bit of a stretch and um, worry about doing some proper testing once I get my BMS, which I've ordered and uh, so as soon as that arrives um, I'll be able to do some full load testing to, to full capacity testing to make sure that um, I know how much capacity I've actually got. What it is probably isn't as important as knowing what it is. Turned it off. Just this kind of fear of getting it wrong. So I've turned it off. I'm going to leave it overnight and uh, I'll come back in the morning. So we were 3.38. Be interesting to see how much it drops. Um, anyway, I'll have a look in the morning. So I left it overnight with the charger turned off and lost about 3 milliamps. But now um, I've had it back on this morning and I am pushing the 3.99, 3.4 volts. So at this point I'm going to crank it up a little higher and uh, we'll go for the top end of 3.5. Just before 3.6, and um, we're running at that for a while. We are getting close now, we're over 3.5 volts, still cranking at 7 amps, pouring power into these batteries. 7 amps is probably about as much as that stupid little alligator clip's going to handle anyway. Everything's still cool, and uh, I'm going to keep a very close eye on the voltages because as soon as it hits 3.6, I'm going to shut it down. It's probably quite important to note this bit happens really fast. I mean, this is real time how quickly the voltage is increasing. We're talking a millivolt every, I don't know, maybe 10 seconds or something like that. So we're into what's called the knee. Um, and so it's actually climbing really quite fast. Now I want to hit 33.6 and shut it down. And that's it. So we're at 3.6 volts now. So I'm going to shut this down, let it rest for a bit, and see how it looks. So now while it's resting after being charged, I'll just explain the last step. Um, I think it's kind of important. Lithium-ion batteries don't like being full and they don't like being empty. They love sitting at about half and you can leave them sitting at half for months and months. So I don't want to leave these full. Now um, they're pretty full right now so as soon as I've um, confirmed that they haven't lost any voltage and they are in fact sitting there at the same voltage for every cell um, at between three and a half and six volts as long as it's the same and it's above three and a half volts in the next about half an hour and I'll be pretty happy with that. But that's essentially fully charged, so I don't want to leave it there, um, and I'm going to apply some load to it. So I'm actually going to give my inverter a test and um, put a bit of load through that, and just just to pull the voltage down a little bit so that it's not fully charged, 70, 80, maybe 90 percent charged. Then I'll leave it, and um, once I get my BMS system, I will then do some proper capacity testing. But that's for another video. Alright, so it's been a good 40 minutes and these babies are still sitting at 3.586 volts fairly consistently, but then of course they're all connected together. So um, I think we're good. And 
what I'm going to do now is um, strip this battery pack down and um, reassemble it as a 24 volt pack in its final configuration basically. And I'll do that now. Right, so these are ready to go back together. You will note that um, these little stickers which help show the negative terminal alternate. So what that means is I have a pack of three batteries here that are going to be hooked in parallel like this and then they're going to be connected so they're negative, negative, negative and they will be connected to the positive of the next three which is here, so then they're connected to the positive, to the negative of the next three, they're connected to the positive of the next three, the negative on this side is connected to the positive on this side, and then likewise back down through here. So what I end up with is a master positive here and a master negative here. That's the plan. I'm going to compress these babies back up and see how they look. Right, so that is compressed to 365, pretty much where I had it before. Now put the terminals back on. So something I do note once I've got them in this new configuration is that this, the terminals are slightly out of a line. The cell is quite, quite a little wee bit. The cell is a little wee bit longer here than it is there, which means that my negative terminals are out of line with my positive terminals. Now I need them to be in line, so I'm going to put the cells slightly out of line to um, straighten them up. Now well behaved battery is actually really boring. Um, you can touch any of the terminals and nothing gets very exciting. However, add in a big piece of copper like this and put that in the wrong place and things very quickly get very exciting. We, we don't want that. So it's really important that this only touches the, the exact spot where it's meant to touch and does not go beyond that. In this case, that's right here. So with these three links across the top here, I now have a fully assembled 24 volt battery pack. Now I wonder if this 95mm square cable is a bit of overkill when that 25 actually kind of looks almost appropriate. Anyway, temporary cabling. This is the sort of thing I intend to use. That's just what was hooked up to my battery pack before. So across here I have 28.57 volts. So that is fully charged, absolutely fully charged. Now, the, this cheap meter actually reads a touch higher than that, 0.1 of a volt higher than that. And um, 
I'm pretty comfortable with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got that hooked up to my inverter. Now this is a Victron inverter, 24 volt of course, 500 watt or thereabouts. So when I turn that on, I get a really slight draw, although this is pretty rough. Um, so I might put my meter across it. Next to nothing, 0.2 of an amp thereabouts. Interesting, this meter is um, out a little bit, so that's 0.3 positive, and if I turn it around, it's 0.5, so it's 0.2 of an amp out, or 0.1 of an amp out, which makes sense because when it's not sitting anywhere, it sits on about 0.1. I don't know how to zero it, so I should work that out. Anyway, I'll leave that hooked up and now I'm going to just give it a bit of a load. Ooh, yeah. So that's a fan cranking, I think that's 100 watts. 120 watts. It should be about 4 amps and sure enough, that baby's saying it's about 4 amps. Find a quieter place to point that. So that says it's using about 4 amps, which seems about right. This says it's using about 4 amps, which seems about right. Now, um, I wonder if I can set this. Interestingly, this cheap battery monitor says I have 25.58 volts. Now, if I run my meter, now if I run my meter across the terminals that are driving all this, I have 27.58. So it's a couple of volts low now, after reading the 0.1 of a volt high earlier on. At the battery, yeah, 27.58. But it is getting the amps pretty close to right. And the voltage is irrelevant. And that's not the meter I'm actually going to use. Okay, this fan has been running for maybe an hour and a half or something. Um, drawing about 106 watts, or thereabouts, maybe about 4 amps, 4 and a quarter amps. And I've had enough of that, I don't want to go to bed. Oops. That's the end of that for tonight. No more current flowing. Everything's disconnected from the breakers, so... So that's the battery, top balanced, fully charged, and then discharged a little bit to... Um, just to take the top off of it. And now it's ready for some proper capacity testing. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, next I'll be doing some capacity testing on this battery bank here. Um, so if you want to watch that then hit all the buttons, like and subscribe and a uh, little bell thingy and that'll let you know when the next video is dropped and hopefully that means we'll see you again soon. Take care. Matewa.